Hey guys, Andy back from Mediocre Hobbies bringing you another 3D printing style videos. One of the armies that I am the most proud of in my collection, probably is the army I am the most proud of, is my Death Corpse of Krieg army. It stands at nearly seven, 8,000 points fully painted. I have most of the units that have ever existed for them, a swathe of tanks and other cool units that I have done to basically the best of my ability. What I'm gonna do here today is add another thing to that but something that isn't meant for Death Corps of Krieg, or at least not supposed to be for Death Corps of Krieg. And that is a beautiful new sculpt by Archvillain Games from this month's uh, collection, um, the Dead Men's Brigade. They have these huge, big, hulking war suits, um, and I think they're armed correctly to be counted as an Imperial Knight. They're the right size to be Imperial Knight, and they have that very Baroque World War I, World War II style aesthetic to it. So I am very excited to get it painted up to match my Krieg and get it on the table. So follow along with me on this journey and let's see if I can pull it off. Before I get into it, huge thank you to all my active patrons. Bet you guys will be able to see the lights on and the camera's rolling. If you're interested in joining my Patreon, there's links to all of that below. The benefits are a private Discord server, a bunch of other benefits you can see when you're actually on the Patreon itself, and an extra video every single week. So that's 52 extra videos a year just for you guys. Okay, guys, let's get into this night. Okay, as you can see, this thing is an absolute beast. I printed this on my Anycubic Mono, a couple of different prints, got this whole thing done. I had absolutely no fails, and um, printed like a dream hollow body and hollow base but everything else is solid gave it a coat of chaos black and then a zenithal of gray sear just to pop the light a little bit unlike a lot of my other videos this one i'm going to be using an airbrush on because that's what i use for my krieg tanks and as i said i want to add this into my krieg collection add it in as a knight stand in for that army and i want it to match as close to them as possible so my process is very simple it's the fang sprayed all over the flat armor panels of a miniature because I'm using an airbrush, it is quite a quick and smooth uh, process. Obviously a tank is more of a big square or rectangular box, very easy to do. There's a lot of nooks and crannies and grooves in this piece. So it took a little bit more time to get that uh, blue everywhere that I wanted it to be. Make sure I didn't miss any of the joints. Now I'm gonna go in with a serif and sepia shade and basically give a light coat to the entire miniature. I know a lot of people will do a lot of like pre-shading or undershading with airbrushing, very carefully going in. Now that you're better airbrushes than I am, I prefer just giving it a quick coat all over. You drop the PSI down to about 10 or 15 and it goes on like a glaze, basically just tinting the color. And then after that, I'm going to go back in with the fang once more. And then I'm going to carefully go in kind of the more flatter panels and the more raised areas, leaving that sepia version in all the recesses. It's just how I've been doing it. it, it there may be better ways of doing it out there, but uh, for me, I think it gives great results. Extremely proud of all of my Creed tanks. Um, and funny enough, as I've the uh, the movie magic, I've actually seen what this thing looks like at the end, and I'm quite pleased with it. So I do hope you guys stick around to the end and see uh, the final result, because even I was a little surprised at how well it turned out, how well I think it matches into a Krieg force. So I hope you are looking forward to that as well. And as you can see, I'm being quite careful in the trigger control, just going for some of those flatter panels, leaving the rivets and stuff nice and dark, and uh, bits and pieces like this. Here's where I made a bit of a mess. So the gun shield on this for the big Gatlin cannon I decided was going to be in chevrons. All of my Krieg tanks have dozer blades and every dozer blade is just a giant chevron. And this adds a really nice pop of color into the force and it helps to keep the whole army cohesive. I wanted to add that color in here, but I haven't done a Krieg tank in quite some time. So I did actually forget the process. So I sprayed the thing white. I masked it off like I normally do. I pull off every second uh, strip of sellotape or masking tape so I get those perfect lines. Sprayed it yellow. As you can see, I'm using inks, uh, Liquitex white ink, and then the uh, the like yellow ink from thingy is just so good for airbrushing. Applied these, got them all cleaned up, and then as I removed the tape, I realized the mistake that I'd made. Um, I felt quite silly after doing it because you know, my chevrons were all black and yellow. And I had sprayed the entire panel to start with white, then chevroned it. So it literally took me until I did this and my brain went, wait a minute, that doesn't look right. White and yellow. What, what the hell is this? Yeah. 
So, uh, through Move Magic, I went and redid the whole bloody thing, and we'll do another satisfying tape rip. But, oh, look, it's black underneath. So, it's a correct chevron striped look, um, which is exactly what I really wanted. Being a little bit impatient, as you can see, the ink isn't purely dry here, but that's okay. As long as you don't put your thumb across it, it's not going to make too much of a difference. The Gatling cannon on this thing is so long that it's so much closer to the camera that it just likes to focus on that. It was a bit of a nightmare painting with that thing. But anyway, there's my Chevron gun shield, which I think turned out really nice. And is, like I said, a really nice pop of color. You can see we're starting to get somewhere. Lead dress was then used to basically all the metallic parts, so everything else that I don't want to just be pure blue. So the barrel of the giant Gatling cannon. And then there's a bunch of other guns on it. Uh, the twin little stubbers on top the belt of ammunition um pistons and bits like that but mostly it's going to be entirely blue i like the idea of these things being kind of rough and ready when someone goes to repaint them they're not not trying to paint this bolt or this rivet it's basically just a big brush on a tired soldier <laughs> but anyway get the silver in all the places that i wanted to go i really do like the the base on these miniatures as well normally when 3d printed companies produce you know custom bases to go with their things i generally don't print them i think i'm pretty good at making custom bases myself and i think that printing out the base is like almost like a waste of resin plus i enjoy the process of making a base so i like to print off their thing then i make my own base and i don't have to worry about it but stuff like they brought out for this with the crushed old trench line there's broken duck boards an old tank trap there's discarded shells it's so cool and interesting and really plays into the theme of my trench warfare that I, I just had to do it. As you can see, I went in with the silver and all the bullet holes in this thing as well. It is covered in small arms fire as if a million people desperate in a trench line were trying to stop this thing from reaching them as it stomped across no man's land. Uh, some Blood Angels red contrast was used on the tabards. It's got some like hanging down bits and um, wasn't really sure what to do with these. They don't really match into my Krieg aesthetic, um, but I just decided to keep it red. Red is a nice generic kind of bright color. It's really nice. It doesn't really take away anything from the blue or the yellow or the black or anything like that. From here, we are going to go into Dark Earth a Diorama. Um, this is a basically a textured paste if you have not used the ak texture paint they're absolutely amazing they're about 10 euro for a tub like this size and it's so big it lasts forever um much better value for money than other texture paints out there on the market if i can find a nice martian version of this by any company if ak do and i don't know if they do it will basically save my life so i started applying this all over the uh, texture of the of the base going over some of the duckboard and some of the other details i really wanted to blend the base that they printed with the base that that i put the model onto to make a blend in now we are going to go over and have a look at this video's sponsor the sponsor of this week's video is arch villain games this is in fact the fifth month in a row that these guys have sponsored me i've managed to do a video for every single one of their sci-fi releases so far and this one is by far my favorite has a huge collector of krieg and these guys getting stuck in with that aesthetic they've given me some fantastic miniatures to play with you choose to use them in your own unique game system or use them as stands in for other games they are perfect for so many other scenarios these four gigantic mechs which basically are stand in for knights are my favorite pieces from the set but the basic infantry are nothing to be scoffed at i may also print off sometime in the very near future a version of their ogrins these are quite large bulky guys a gas mass large cannons gun shields they are absolutely magnificent if you are interested at all in supporting Archfilm Games or checking out their subscription service, I will leave links to all of that below. Um, I'm sure you are all aware of their fantastic fantasy line that they've been doing for many years. Like I said, this is their fifth month in the sci-fi genre and they have knocked it out of the park each and every month. And I hope to continue working with them along into the future. Once again, guys, check out the links below and see if it's for you. Okay, after that texture paste was dry, it was time for me to do my two layer of dry brushing, which really tidies up and uh, makes that ground. As you see, it looks really like just brown. So I find the trick to doing nice kind of trenchy bases is to hit it with a dry brush of Riser Rust first. Orange, I know that seems bizarre. 
think about all those old war zones there's lots of decayed wood under there. there's lots of old broken pieces of equipment shell casings and all that kind of stuff which is going to be leaking kind of rust and detritus into the soil it's never just brown if you notice it um, and i think that the shade of orange dry brushed in really does add something a real sense of depth to the environment after that i just jump over to a tyrant skull dry brush but any kind of bone or beige color will really work for this as long as you stay consistent across your army this is once again just to add another pop of color bring up the ground a little bit more obviously i've painted in things like the uh sandbags that are there the tank traps that are there the broken bits of um wood and um, brickwork that's in there all of that's going to get hit with these dry bursts which really just blends it all into the scenario after that it was time to add some transfers so i grabbed my new um, astromil term uh, vehicle transfer and a krieg transfer sheet as well picked off a few pieces and because this miniature is so detailed it's actually really hard to find flat surfaces to put them on but i did find some one of this transfer I used was the Iron Duke transfer, which is now just this guy's name. This is the Iron Duke. I think it works perfectly. And it's printed in uh, across his head for all time. After that, we went on to Agrax Earthshade and gave all the metallic parts a coat of this. Just to once again darken down. They're all too bright and too vibrant. Um, this thing is not maintained massively because basically the, it's a constant war zone. This thing gets sent out into the front lines every single day. You can imagine when the Krieg Wars first started, there might have been thousands of these things stomping across the battlefield fighting. In my head, they're almost like a venerable relic now. There wouldn't be very many of them at all. It always refers to the uh, the Jaegers from a movie that I won't mention just in case. But uh, anyway, and they talk about the uh, having one of the one of the original first edition Jaeger still in service, the big Russian Behemoth. I think about something kind of like that. These things are not seen in Imperial Warfare very often and it's kind of treated with kind of reverence, but still as a usable piece of equipment. So the Kriegsmen are still going to send this thing out every single day. If it comes back, it comes back. If it does not, it does not. A quick silver dry brush across all of the hull adds that weathered look, adding kind of chipping and weathering to all the edges. And of course, all of the silver parts and his big mega claw, adding just those kind of scratches and stuff. It's a very quick step, but it does really help blend that all in together and stop the model looking kind of too flat and blue. I also added that aggro search shade to all of the bullet holes leaking out and stuff. Just add a little bit more to that. Corn red was then used just to add up the quickest of quick highlights to all of those parchmenty pieces. Obviously, I would have hit them a little bit with the silver, and we do not want silver on any of the parchment that look kind of weird or cloth. A quick and easy step. After that, the last thing that I did was add weathering powder from my bucket of weathering powder. Um, to basically all the joints and all the separate like i said this thing is, is a war machine it is constant ball it's going to be dirty and grimy and this does actually also really help to break up the fact that the model is 90 percent blue um i think adding that depth of color i've talked about it in different videos before whether it's the stippling technique with the iris opus brushes or with the sponging on of chips and scratches with dry brushing and then some weathering powder all you're trying to do is add layers into a painting process which really does help sell it and now I feel like this is a really cool piece that I can definitely see placed in the center of a Krieg line, fit right in with squads of infantry running around his feet, and it dueling across the board with you know chaos machines and stuff like that, some, some demon engines and the like. The Iron Duke is here to serve, and the Iron Duke will get the job done. Got a couple of photos of the finished miniature here. I hope you did like the final result. This is one of my favorite things I've done for 3D printing and for Arch Willing Games so far. So I'm excited to see what I get to do in the future. And well, there we have it. One, I believe, very cool stand-in for a night for my Death Corps of Creator Army, sculpted by Archfilm Games, who are the sponsor of today's video. So huge thank you to them for sponsoring today's video. If you liked the video, make sure you give it a like. The more people that like it, the more people that the video gets pushed out to, the more the video gets seen, the more I grow, and so on and so forth. So if you like it, hit that button. If you're not already subscribed, make sure you also hit that button. And if you have any questions about anything I did in this video or about the Arch Film Games in general, put it in the comments below and I will get back to absolutely every one of you guys. Thank you so much for sticking around at the end of the video. I'll see you in the next one.